everyone. Thanks for joining me. I'm Elizabeth Alfano on the Plant-Based Business Hour. I am over the moon with today's guest. We talk a lot about on um, the Plant-Based Business Hour that if we need a safe and secure future, we need a safe and secure food supply. That is plant-based foods. We all know that. But maybe the rest of the world hasn't 100% got the memo. So how do we get other people to open up to a vegan lifestyle? Oh my gosh, I have to bring in the founder of Veganuary and the founder of Million Dollar Vegan. And now he's the managing director of Veg Capital. Matthew Glover, thanks for being with me. Oh, it's a pleasure to be on here, Elizabeth. And uh, you've had some amazing guests uh, before me. So um, I feel quite humbled to be uh, to be on the show. And I hope I uh, give you some good answers. Oh my gosh. Well, that's kind of the theme of today. You are humble. You're so humble, in fact, that many people don't even know that you are really the force behind Veganuary and Million Dollar Vegan and now Veg Capital. We're going to talk about all of those. But just to give people a little bit of context, let's dial it back and take mm -hmm. everyone back to how and why you started Veganuary in 2014. Okay. Um, well, I'm, the brief history is that uh, I've been a business person, an entrepreneur, since I was 21 um, in the window and door sector. So manufacturing uh, windows and doors, not very exciting. Um, spent my 20s and early 30s uh, really just trying to be rich, trying to be, you know, I wasn't a nice person, actually. I was just trying to, um, you know, make money and drive fast cars and big house and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, and then you start sort of challenging that and thinking, well, you know, am I happy? I'm happy doing this. Mm. Um, and uh, so around about to nine, 10 years ago, uh, I went vegan. And that was such a big change in my life. And, uh, you know, everything starts to change. And um, so I was this vegan guy um, in the north of England, um, hanging out with a lot of builders and joiners and, you know, window people. So I was the only vegan around. Um, but, uh, you know, the more I started looking into it, um, and I'd also I'd taken part in a campaign called Movember. Mm -hmm. you're aware of it, where you grow the mustache for the month of November. And, sure. Uh, I mean, yeah. I don't, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'd, uh, I thought it was such a great campaign. So um, when I got together with my, my wife, Jane, and uh, we started trying to think about what's the best thing that we could do for the animals, um, well, we, we thought about Movember, sort of vegan had to be the whatever somebody's going to be doing for the month, obviously. Um, and then what was going to be the, the best month? And, and really, it had to be uh, January because of New Year's resolutions. Uh, people have eaten too much food at Christmas. Um, and also, it tends to be more people are focused on health and mm -hmm. trying to things. So we had vegan and January. And then it was like, well, January, is that going to work? Is it as a word? Um, but it took off. We were so lucky. Um, you know, the media immediately picked up on it, which was, uh, which was great. Um, I'm going to quickly ask you to shift your computer just a teeny bit so you're in the middle. Uh, there you go. That's perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so I think this is actually <clears> very <throat> inspirational. Right before we got on the line together, you're like, oh, gosh, you know, I was just kind of this business guy who does doors and windows and it's not that exciting. <laughs> and actually, I think it is very exciting to think how, you know, someone is just moving along with their life. And then all of a sudden they think, you know, hold up, I could make this life a lot more impactful. And in the end, you've seen that you've gotten this huge reward out of it. So you take on this thing, Veganuary, where you're going to get ask everybody for the month of January to go vegan. I'm initially just starting in the UK, kind of riffing off of November. And then whammo, here we have, uh, it's been six years, I guess, that it's been going on. And you have 400,000 people who commit to going vegan around the world for the month of January. Boom. <laughs> yeah, we did extremely well this year. And uh, I mean, one of the things that's been great is myself and Jane really sort of built the campaign and we bootstrapped it. The, the money that we were making out of the window business was sort of financing the startup of, of the campaign. And part of the reason that, that we did it, uh, do you, have you ever met Lisa Shapiro, um, an amazing activist? And we met her at the Animal Rights. Yeah. yeah. And uh, she, she, I remember sitting down with her and we just, I'd just gone vegan. I didn't know what to do. And, and she said, well, what are you good at, Matthew? And I was like, well, sales, marketing, running business. And she said, well, that's the sort of thing that really you should be doing for the animals rather than breaking into farms and rescuing animals type of thing. So, um, yeah, so ever since then, we've tried to think of things in a, in a business way. Um, 
and the, the campaign's always been non-judgmental. We've always been keen to work with, with companies. So one of the key things that Beganuary does now is engages with corporates. You know, we, we're, we're speaking to chain restaurants, we're speaking to supermarkets all the way through the year and helping build up so that they can do new product launches, um, have special offers, add uh, vegan options to their menus for January. And that's the key thing. And um, it just builds year after year. Um, so hopefully, you know, we don't lose, run out of steam, but we've got a great team there now. So, um, and it's, uh, it's just building year after year. So I want to kind of riff on what you're saying, why this is so important. You have built up so many people committed to going vegan the month of January and people are naturally thinking about their health and New Year's resolutions, et cetera, that companies see the financial benefit in making products specifically to launch and capitalize on what you've developed, which is this market of people going vegan. So you see that it's this circle that keeps working together and expanding I just love that this is possible and that Veganuary is focusing not just on individuals now, but on the corporations. Um, and of course, mm -hmm. we're going to pull that into veg capital and talk about that. But um, corporations, as I understand it, they're not all vegan corporations. These are meat and dairy corporations as well, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, from our perspective, if we can focus their minds on a, a specific period of time. So a lot of the supermarkets, they'll be thinking about Halloween, they'll be thinking about Thanksgiving in the US, they'll be thinking about Christmas and Easter, and Veganuary is the vegan month now. So it's it's yeah. they start thinking about it. How are we gonna get more plant-based products out? Mm -hmm. And they're all working towards, towards January. And I'm seeing it as well. Um, I know we're gonna talk about veg capital, but I'm seeing it in the pitch decks. For the, mm -hmm. for the, they're all seeing it as an activation point and they're thinking about how can we get our products ready for January because there's going to be so much buzz around it, particularly in the UK, but um, but it, it's it's expanding overseas as well. It certainly has a large presence now in the US as well. And yeah. just really you've started focusing on the US sort of recently, so that's only expected to grow. So I, yeah. I love that this businessman who sort of thinks of himself as like, oh, gosh, you know, I'm windows and doors. What can I do? Now taking your business expertise and you've created Veganuary, which in, in – result of that has created corporations interest, which as a result of that creates mm -hmm. a market for small businesses to have products ready for these other corporate entities to carry and distribute yeah. in January. And again, maybe you have this number, how many people start on Veganuary and stay? Consumers I'm talking about. Yeah, it's it's very difficult to know for sure. We, we tend to send a survey out in February, um, sort of mm. a and about a week out into February. So if anybody's going to have gone back to their old eating habits, that we should they should know by then. Um, so the people that do the survey, um, it's typically been around about somewhere between 40 and 60% each year that say they're going to stick with it. Now, that sounds great, and it is great. Um, the other thing is most of the people that say they're not going to stick with it, they're more likely to still make changes to their diet. So, you know, if you've been typically having cow's milk on, on your cereals every morning and then you've tried oat milk, like the Oatly Barista, for example, and you think, actually, this is better than cow's milk. Yeah. So you can with that from February onwards. So we're seeing a lot of that as well. Um, and uh, I mean, one thing as well that's, that we uh, recently found out in the UK is that the, the word Veganuary and the whole campaign has got 40% brand awareness with the UK population as a whole. So there's the only other campaign um, it, that uh, sort of animal rights campaign that's stronger brand in the UK is PETA. And obviously they're, they're huge and been doing it for years. Yeah. So we were really yeah. pleased though. We, we've managed to yeah. get into that sort of uh, public consciousness, which is great. Yes, and I'll say the same is true with Million Dollar Vegan, not to the extent of Veganuary. <laughs> uh, Million Dollar Vegan, for those of you who don't know, it's this campaign to see if you can get uh, very well-known worldwide figures such as the Pope or even a president or um, maybe some celebs down the line. We'll see what you have. I don't know if you can share maybe what you have coming down the line. <laughs> oh, give us some hints. Okay, well, so it's trying to get these people to go vegan for the month 
of um is there a specific well, for, 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 for any time, time. Yeah, for a yeah, period yeah. of time right for a yeah. period of time and to see yeah. what kind of ripple effect so again sort of going back to your marketing prowess which you have so clearly uh going <laughs> uh trying to get them to go vegan and all the press that comes out of that and all the people that they influence obviously these are some of the largest uh, leaders in the world can you share with us who might be coming down the line or give us a hint for a million dollar no, vegan no not really but i mean the, the, obviously <laughs> the idea was with <laughs> With Pope Francis, um, you know, it's, uh, we, 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 we originally thought about doing it for January uh, and tying it into the Veganuary campaign and then... Um, Lent. But, but, Lent. But with, with, yeah, Lent obviously makes a lot more sense with, with, with the Catholic Church. So we, we, we chose to do that and create a completely new brand out of it. Um, and that, I mean, the first campaign, we got so much media attention. And also in regions that's probably not hearing about veganism so much. So we, yes. were, we did extremely well in Italy. We did extremely well in, in Spain and Portugal, which obviously strong Catholic countries. Not so good in, in, in England, in the UK, actually. We hardly got any mm. attention here. But I think that was partly down to a quite a secular, non-religious society. So mm -hmm. there was a big interest in that. Um, and uh, But yeah, on the whole, it was really positive. And then we decided to try... President Trump, obviously highly controversial. Uh, <laughs> but you're talking lots of press there. Yeah, and, and we, we, we obviously knew it was very unlikely that President Trump was going to go vegan for January, but, um, uh, you know, we got, we got on Fox News, which uh, I think that's probably the first time the Fox News website has ever talked about veganism. Um, and, uh, yeah, some, yeah, some pretty good media attention for that. Now what we're working on is uh, food giveaways, so I'm not as involved anymore. So there's Naomi, who's based in Santa yes. Barbara, not too far away from you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, mainly because COVID-19 has sort of changed the dynamic and it doesn't feel appropriate to be offering a million dollars at the yes. moment to anybody. Yes. Um, so we've switched and, and we're giving food away all over the world um, to, to poor and, and needy people, uh, obviously all, all vegan food as well. Mm -hmm. That's just wonderful. So very exciting. Okay, well, so you do have this business background. So um, let's pull it back a little bit to Veg Capital. I have to say, when I heard that you were managing director of a venture capital fund, I was like, what's going on here? So tell me, Matthew, what's going on here? Yeah, I'm a bit surprised myself, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> um, so we um, uh, through Veganu and Three Million Dollar Vegan became uh, connected with uh, some mission lined investors, um, and it was very clear that there's some great things happening in the U.S. You've got straight up capital, you've got new crop capital, you've got Veg Invest, you've got uh, clear current capital. Clear, yeah, exactly. So there's so, so much many. going on, but in in Europe and the U.K. not so much. And we were finding that there's a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, sort of bootstrapping their businesses, particularly, uh, and but such a strong scene as well. So, um, yeah, decided to. I've been working on it for six, eight, nine months, maybe. We we launched about two months ago. Uh, it's been tremendous. I mean, I think I've probably seen, well, at least over a hundred pitch decks um, just in, in in a few weeks. Already, wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've already we've invested sort of quietly in about nine different companies. Um, and then I think we've probably got about another four or five that we're in sort of advanced stages of discussions. Uh, and uh, so and some great, I mean, some great opportunities out there. Um, and is it only companies in the UK that can apply? Yeah, so we're, we're focusing more on the UK and Europe, um, but we are talking to companies in, in other parts of the world as well. That the, one of the key things that separates us from traditional venture capital is that we're giving all of the, uh, the profits away. It's all going back to charity. Um, so it's uh, and we'll, we'll be focusing on the most effective animal protection charities, particularly those ones that are working on diet change. So again, it's a virtuous circle because we're giving, providing money to help on the demand side, while we're also working on the supply side. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it seems like, you know, I'm very pleased and, and honored to be able to, to do this work. Yes, to me, it's that same sort of circle we were talking about with yeah, uh, exactly. Veganuary. So you're working on the demand yeah. and the supply at the same time. So it's yeah. this circle that keeps on growing, which is why yeah. it's such a beautiful business model. I don't know if you can share this with me, but is it um, your funds, you and Jane, you said that you had also combined yourselves with mission aligned investors. So you have a couple of set investors and yes. you're working out the, the investments for them. 
Yes, that's that's exactly it. So we're 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 working. Yeah. So there's these mission aligned investors. So we, it's there's no cap on the investments. Everything's done on a case by case basis. Um, we are. We've had quite a few people contacting us saying they want to invest in veg capital. So we're just thinking that through now. And don't be surprised if we we set up a fund too, which um, you know we would go to other LPs. We would go to high net worth individuals um, and. Uh, yeah, anybody that wants to invest, but they potentially, you know, for them to go deal by deal with lots and, and negotiating with lots of different entrepreneurs, does it make sense for them to just invest in a fund and let us take care of all of that going forward? So, so we're thinking that through. That's a possibility. But at this point in time, we're just finding our feet. I mean, this is new, new, new industry to me. So um, I, I'm reading private equity books and venture capital books you know, to get myself up to speed as quick as possible. I've got some I can share with you because <laughs> okay. I've been doing the same thing. I've, um, you know, I've always been a business person. That's where I studied. I started yeah. my career in Fortune 500 companies. Then I opened two companies of my own. Uh, so that's yeah. always been my focus. But venture capital investing is its own beast. And so wow. I'm, I'm really kind of getting up to speed <laughs> on that because uh, let's talk about this. What a time to invest. Now, clearly, I'm not telling anyone to invest. You have to figure out your own finances and your strategy. And this is not advice. All I'm saying is that, oh, my gosh, the market and I think coronavirus has had a large impact on this. I'd like to hear your thoughts since you're the one receiving mm -hmm. the pitch decks. Oh, my gosh, there's never been more uh, companies starting up, as you can see. And then at the same time, mm -hmm. there's this demand that's growing. What mm -hmm. kind of I call them vegetrepreneurs. What kind of vegetrepreneurs are you seeing out there? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the your question about the, the COVID, um, it, it seems to be that there's winners and losers on that. So there's, mm, yes. there's some companies, I mean, we, we've invested in a company called Vegan Kind, um, and they're an online vegan food delivery supermarket. And uh, almost immediately, you know, off the, scale. They're, they're off the scale, I mean, doing three or four times more business than they were doing before. And and certainly we're finding that the, all the companies that already had uh, sort of a direct-to-consumer online presence have seen sales rocket. Um, some of those companies that uh, were focused more on food service, obviously, um, have found it found it tough, and they've had to look at um, you know how do we pivot our sort of whole route to market strategy uh, to be able to deal with uh, this this new normal. Yeah, um, you know, in terms of how I see how entrepreneurs, um, are, you know, how they're changing. Um, I mean, I'm still quite new to it, you know, so this has been like six months that I've been spending so much time, uh, you know, talking uh, to entrepreneurs, but it's very clear that there's a lot of ambition here. Um, yes. ha what happened with uh, the Beyond Me IPO was obviously taken everything to um, a new level, really. Um, yes. And also, it's very clear that there's a lot of um, more interest. Um, From in, outside money, you mean? Yeah, outside money, yeah. And that's something that I'd really like to start focusing on because if we can start bringing new money into this movement, mm -hmm. that's going to be um, amazing. Oh, that's Janelle. Yes, you know Janelle. <laughs> Saying hi, hi there. Janelle. How's it going? <laughs> uh, yes, so I think that is a really fascinating turn. And I don't think it's... Uh, coronavirus specifically, but coronavirus has given it a big tailwind that there's mm -hmm. outside money coming in because people are starting to realize that the business equation of meat and dairy is a very yeah. inefficient business yeah. equation. So yeah, if you so. want to go from 7 billion people to 10 billion people, but you're not getting more land and you're not getting yeah. more water, you just start to yeah. do the math and you realize there aren't the resources for us to be able to feed those people. And that's how we make money. So we might as well shift to things that are more cost effective. And then we can feed those people and make money from it. I don't want to say like they've got their hearts in it, but mm -hmm. they definitely have their wallets in it. And that is a big shift. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't send it said it better. And, and particularly um, with how it's affected the, the, the meat supply as well, um, obviously with these meat packing plants and the virus yeah. spreading around there. And it's not just happening in the US, it's been happening in the UK and Europe as well. So, you know, things have got to change. Things have got right. to change. Yeah. Right. And I do think people are starting to put that together for themselves. Um, yeah. Maybe people are starting to hear that, you know, meat-borne pandemics come yeah. from 
eating meat, <laughs> you know, so there's that. And then who's giving you the information about the food you eat just on a general scale. I think people are very fed up because most people, you know, statistically, most people are either overweight or have heart trouble or have high blood pressure. Or I'm speaking for the U S now or uh, yeah. are diabetic or pre-diabetic. So that's the majority of the country. So the majority of the country doesn't feel well. And I think they're realizing and, and coronavirus plays a role here because we haven't had great strategy or direction from up top. And I think people are very frustrated with their leaders on the right or on the left as to like, what the heck is going on? And I think that ripples out into the food system and people say, I don't feel well. And I'm not sure I really trust the information that I've been giving about the food that I've got. And then they see the food supply coming from these tainted places that are pandemic filled. I just think there's a lot of, of doubt now entering into the system and more room for vegan products to fill that white space, I guess I'll call it. Also, I'm sure you're aware the Plant-Based Foods Association in the United States coupled with Kroger, the a grocery store chain in the United yeah, States. I saw that, yeah. Yes, I'll just tell people what that study says. So uh, for three or four months, I think it's four months, they put plant-based meats in the meat aisle, just like Beyond Meat had been doing, really making it accessible for people. And they saw that across the nation, plant-based meat sales went up 23% in the Midwest, which never gets serviced enough for <laughs> plant-based foods. It went up 32% and that repeat purchases were also up in the 30s. So uh, I think grocery stores, cha-ching, cha-ching, are also seeing, okay, now we can make money from this. And there is the demand that we weren't fully recognizing was there. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I better myself. You're what? I said I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> so kind of you. Well, so, okay, so you're investing in these companies. You're getting, a, you know, 100 pitch decks in just a couple of weeks. What kind of companies are you looking for? Yeah, um, not too dissimilar to some of the existing funds out there. So we're focusing on alternative proteins, obviously, meat replacements, dairy replacements, egg replacements. Um, we're also uh, expanding into ready meals um, yeah. as well. um, and uh, one of the challenges that we're having is that you know if we get 100 decks through the likelihood is that we're probably only going to invest in about five of them because um, and that's so difficult for me that's the thing that I found most difficult is saying no to people because a lot of the people I'm saying no to have got amazing businesses and amazing opportunities as well it's just that you know we can't we can't service every opportunity there it's a limited sized fund um so we're just we're we're trying to to to, to concentrate on um chris kerr at new crop capital always talks about share of stomach um yes. and that, that makes so much sense to me so you know what what are the animals that are um are being eaten the most of so chickens and fish obviously um dairy products it's, you know people consume a lot of dairy so Mm -hmm. We've invested in some a plant-based milk company. We're hoping to invest in a yogurt company uh, very shortly. So, so it's those type of companies that we're looking at, and also um, cultivated meat and also fermentation uh, products as well. So um, we haven't invested so far in any of those, but there's uh, watch this space. <laughs> I like yeah, I, I nice cup. I know. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think. Um, Fermentation is a very interesting area. I've had the CEO and founder Thomas Jonas of Nature's Find, which is out of Chicago in the stockyards where they used to have the slaughterhouse. There's still slaughterhouses in Chicago, but many of them are gone. Used to be slaughterhouse capital of the world. Many of them are gone. And right where there used to be a major slaughterhouse, they took that factory and land over and they've got this fermentation plant. Uh, still so much for me to learn about that, but just quickly, folks, fermentation is... Um, uh, taking microbes and giving them the food and fodder to grow into basically anything. He was saying that they're making cheese, milk, and chicken, like all in the same place. So mm -hmm. the science behind it, the veg tech, I like to call them the vegetables <laughs> and the veg tech. Veg tech is getting serious, folks. So you're going to take a look at that. Well, I can see the trickiness of how, having to decide which mm -hmm. you're going to, you know, if you get 100 applications and you can only take five. And I imagine you're going to be even more swamped as people get more and more worried about veg capital. Um, and it's tricky business. As you say that you're going to invest perhaps in a yogurt company and a plant-based milk company, do you all see, for, I'll speak about plant-based milk. It's got 14% of the, the milk category in the U.S. And there's so many plant-based milks now. Are you at all concerned that it's getting too crowded? Uh, not really. I think... Mm -hmm. um, no, I mean, like, particularly on, on meat, it's it's like 
less than 1% of the, of the market in the UK. I think it's probably the same in the US as well. Um, yeah, on milk, I'm still seeing the, the, the companies that we've invested in are still managing to take um, market share from dairy. So I, I almost feel like, um, you know, there can't be too many, too many mm -hmm. businesses. And, and, you know, and the more new entrants that we get, some are going to fail, obviously. And some of the sure. ones that we're going to invest in fail. Um, but it just keeps the, the other ones on the toes a lot more and competing with new product developments and everything. So, um, no, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, time will tell. Um, mm -hmm. But this, I mean, you look at companies like, have you seen Oakley's valuation? Oh, it's, yeah, I sure have. And thanks, Oprah, for boosting that. <laughs> Oprah recently invested in Oatly. Yeah, but they were they were not such a big company three or four years ago. They just yes. totally rebranded their marketing. Um, great strategy. Um, brought out some new products. The Oatly Barista that must be one of their best sellers. But suddenly it's just gone like that, hasn't it? They've gone for international expansion. So um, you know, if other companies that, that are looking to get into plant based milk are looking at Oatly, I'm sure they are. Uh, in fact, they're all talking about them when I see them on the pitch decks. They're all, com you know, <laughs> comparing them to themselves them. to Oatly. Um, so, yeah, but it's so inspirational. And if they learn from that as well, then hopefully we're going to get to replacing cow's milk in the dairy section. A hundred percent, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Replacement a hundred percent. Okay. Well, hopefully. <laughs> Godspeed. Oh, I'm all. I'm all about it. Godspeed for sure. Yeah. So uh, you're you're saying these companies that you're investing in, I'm gonna almost call them sort of mainstream staples in people's stomachs. So milk, cheese, meat. Okay, the mm -hmm. basics. But Susan Hargrave says, "What about clotted cream?" Now, not. No, I agree. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Is that, <laughs> is that coming? <laughs> I haven't seen a pitch deck, Susan, for people <laughs> clotted cream, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I would love to see that, yes. Yeah, yeah, I would too. And, you know, I'll tell you, we're talking about food. That's really what we're looking at, at taking the animals out of the food supply. But there's also vegan leather. I would like to see a vegan wool maybe get sheep out of that chain of supply. So um, I wonder, do you, Susan's got her clotted cream. Is there any one product that you personally really want to see? Oh, gosh, I want a one-for-one -one replacement. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the one th uh, sort of category that we haven't invested in yet that I really want to is cheese. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously lots of vegan cheese companies out there um, and uh, some doing extremely well. We personally haven't done that yet. And uh, the reason I feel so passionate about cheese is through um, all of the years with Veganuary, um, mm -hmm. the surveys in February and to find out what, what people have struggled on. Cheese is the biggie. You know, yes. people find it easier to give up meat than they, they do cheese. So, you know, if there's any great cheese entrepreneurs listening to this podcast, looking for investment, um, we're all ears. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, and I think everyone can see the website here. It's it's scrolling across on the ticker, but it's also under your uh, nameplate. So vegcapital.co.uk. And this is mostly for European companies. Um, so a lot of folks on LinkedIn, maybe watching from Europe, etc. Mostly for LinkedIn company, uh, European companies. Um, yes, these are very interesting times. If we are having successful vegan businesses, most of them have an exit strategy of selling to meat and dairy. Some will make it to the IPO stage, but most are looking at selling to, let's say, Tyson. How do you feel about this? I think it's amazing. And, uh, I, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I, I want to see this. I would recommend this to, to entrepreneurs because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the, these these big organizations such as Tyson have got so much infrastructure in place. They've got so much capital to back it up. They've got talented people working in these organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the networks. They have the buying power. They have the relationships with the, the retailers. So, um, you know, I, I'm 100% supportive. Um, I, I gave a talk at Vivolution um, last, uh, last year, and it was uh, – the title of it is something like why McDonald's, Burger King and Unilever are not the enemy. And, and mm -hmm. I, I genuinely believe that. I feel like we've got to infiltrate these these big companies and do our very, very best to um, to, to, to change them from within. And, uh, I, you know, I, I talked on that, that uh, uh, the evolution about Danone 
who bought White Way Foods. Just for uh, the US market, it will say Dan. And yeah. It's for you, Dan on for you guys. Oh, is it? <laughs> and I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly, but they, they own Alpro in the UK. And I just think if you were in their board, board, boardroom and they've got part of their business that's going like this, at double digit growth, and then part of their business, the dairy side, where it's maybe flatlining or even going backwards, where are you going to invest? You're going to, you're going to start investing more and more in the plant-based side. So um, I just see that as a, as a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. Tina says my favorite croissant. She wants them to go without butter. <laughs> and I will say there is an amazing American company for a butter. I don't know if you've heard of them, Matthew, but they do a great industrial butter, Tina, that is definitely targeting taking out butter from things like croissant and quiche and other uh, industrial baked goods that you might get um, serviced. So that's that is in the works. Um, Yes, I agree. And I think it's a hard pill to swallow. And I understand because I felt this way myself. At first blush, uh, vegans might say, wait a minute, the people who created this mess now get to benefit from it. That's one logic. Place that logic over here. Try to focus on the other logic that these corporations have huge, deep lines of distribution. And ultimately, where companies run into trouble. It's not the idea stage. We've all got, you know, everybody wants to see plant-based ribs any day now, mm -hmm. folks. So, and plant-based steaks, et cetera. And mushrooms are coming into play for plant-based steaks. I mean, it's going to happen, but you know, we're not lacking in ideas and we're not lacking in great food. Lots of great food comes right out of people's kitchens. And then you go to bigger kitchens and where you're really lacking is you go to that middle stage. Who's going to produce your product for large distribution and who's going to distribute it. So there's this bottleneck of there aren't enough co-packers and there's this yeah. bottleneck of how do you get major distribution? And these companies already have that. They already have that set up. And, that, and I talk about this a lot on this show with other vegan investors. And then I always add to it and say, in addition to distribution, they have huge marketing dollars. Because I want to see the advertising campaign where it says, oh, it's so manly to eat plants. And that's coming because when they have the majority of their product lines being plants, they're going to start mm -hmm. advertising them. And that suddenly it's cool and manly to eat plants. So yeah. you need both of those things together, the distribution and the advertising to really change the cultural mindset. Yeah, 100%. And uh, I mean, just as another example, if you look at the, the restaurant business, and uh, if you... Um, there's something, I think on the Happy Cow website, there's something like 5,000 vegan restaurants in the, in the whole world. Right. There's 50 million restaurants in the whole world. Yeah. You know, so the, the, the proportion of restaurants that are, are vegan is like 0.01% or something like that. So even if you had 10 times growth of the next 10 years of vegan restaurants, you know, and, and then you had 1% growth of restaurants as a whole, you could still end up not even touching the sides. So... You know, we need to work within the, we, you know, it's a lot better to get existing restaurants to turn vegan than try and double and treble the number of existing vegan restaurants out there. That, that's my perspective on it. Uh, this statistic might be a little bit old, but I, I get it from the Good Food Institute. It might be from 2019, but that vegan items had penetration to the tune of 11% of restaurants around the world. So Matthew's oh, okay. been talking about vegan restaurants versus non-vegan restaurants, but what we're seeing because consumer demand is changing because of things like Veganuary is that customers want it so much that a non-vegan restaurant is having a vegan menu or vegan options. And so you're seeing plant-based proteins get on the menu, even at non-vegan restaurants. So, yeah. and I think that penetration number is even higher number. So basically that means 11% yeah. of restaurants around the world have some kind of plant-based protein and I'm sure that's higher now. So, so it is a process and it is changing. And, and really, if you want change, that means you want change fast. And if you want change fast, then you need to really include the big players. So uh, it's a tricky, tricky pill to swallow, but it's, it's gotta be there. Um, what do you you know, I used to ask this question just three months ago, I would say, what are your predictions for the plant-based future in three to five years? And now things are changing so quickly, just in several months, I have to change the question and say, <laughs> what are your predictions like in the next year and in the next three to five years? Beyond the world going plant-based, can you be more specific? What are your predictions? So I don't know if the predictions are hopes, um, but uh, I, I would say that I, I certainly feel like there's going to be a lot more money coming into this sector 
which is then going to help stimulate the growth of more businesses. So that's a lot more new product development. That's a lot more marketing budgets to promote um, uh, more plant-based products. Um, so I, I, you know, I can only see huge growth. All of the um, surveys seem to be pointing in the same direction. That you know the traction is there um, for, the, for these categories as a whole. So I'm, I'm incredibly optimistic. You have to be, don't you? Yes. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic. But I'm also the one thing that I'm most certain about is is that you know I'm uncertain at the same time. So you know, yeah. people have said to me, "Do you think we'll ever get a vegan world?" I don't know, but you know that at the end of the day, I'm going to work towards it um, because the, the closer that we get towards it, um, you know, it reduces the suffering of animals. It's better for the environment. So um, I, I don't tend to worry too much about that. I just concentrate on doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I feel very much the same. I, of course, have to be an optimist. And yeah. I do believe we're give or take. I'm just guessing we're give or take around the same age. That's a guess. I do believe in our lifetime we are going to see – a vegan world? Don't know. That would be 100%. We're going to see a majority vegan world. I do believe this. I work towards it, but I try not to overthink it in a way because, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's two steps up, one step back. And not every day is like, oh, a huge, great day. Sometimes you think like, oh, wow. Particularly for us, we've had holidays like July 4th where everyone's grilling and you just think like, oof, I thought you had gotten the memo. Why are you doing this? So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of two steps up, one step back. But I do think overall um, amazing growth. And the great thing about this growth cycle that we've talked about as you create demand and supply at the same time, it grows exponentially. So it's pretty, it could be pretty fast growth. Um, but I will add to that and say that this is the time of the consumer. I think that's my biggest prediction is that people are going to start getting very vocal. You've seen it a little bit in the US about Black Lives Matter, et cetera. They're fed up with things. They want their society to change. I think people are going to feel that same way about their health. They're going to feel that they've been railroaded a little bit and they're going to demand better. And when people start putting their purchasing power together with the power of their voice, uh, you know, they align it with their health values and their ethical values and they use their voice, I think you're going to see government start to pay attention. So for example, right now in the United States, uh, meat and dairy are not profitable businesses. The only way that they survive is because they're subsidized. But hold on, we're a capitalist society. Wait a minute, how do you get away with taking our tax dollars and using them for businesses that cannot stand on their own two feet? Nobody wants that. So I think that's just one example. That That's not even the health example. That's just, I think, these building blocks that have held up meat and dairy, I think they're going to start crumbling. So I'm hoping. I sincerely hope so. And also just to, I mean, the young people as well. I mean, it's, it's very much that the vegan the people that are really more plant-based tend to be younger. I mean, we, we certainly saw that with Veganuary, that it's the 24, 25 to 34 cata, you know, age group where mm -hmm. people that are taking part on it, in it. So the more and more young people that do it and as they get older they stick with it and then there's more young people coming through it's it's going to happen it has to happen yeah i think it's going to go the way of smoking you know imagine <laughs> if you were in an airplane and you pulled out a cigarette people would punch you i mean people yeah. would be like get off the plane you have a cigarette i think the same thing's going to happen with with uh, meat and dairy it's going to be like what you're eating meat get off. I don't know. Uh, okay. So we're going to see that's our hope for the future. Um, any more business notes you want to lead us? I have a couple extra questions just about you personally, which I always like to ask at the end of any, any um, interviews, but um, just from the veg capital investing side, anything that you want to cover or leave people with or tell veg entrepreneurs to keep in mind when pitching, maybe let's go with that. Any real tips for your pitchers? Oh, that's a really great Point. Um, I mean, we've we've seen a lot of pitch decks. Uh, there's been some amazing ones, but there's also been some pretty 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 poor ones. So we have a pitch guidance uh, uh, section on our website, um, and there's ten main areas that we ask people to look at. I can't remember them all, but it's like make sure you talk about your mission. Make sure there's you explain what the problem is, you know, and, and if there is a problem that you're solving it. So how is this product a solution? Um, we need to look at and understand what the competitive landscape is and, yes. uh, you know, um, and why is the product that you're developing uh, better and, uh, than, than the other sort of existing products that are out there? 
not just plant-based, obviously animal-based as well. Um, we need to know what the team, there's a strong team there. So that we've got all of this information. Um, the two key ones that we're, uh, we're finding is not being explained to us is what, what is the promise for an investor? Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, a lot of the time we're getting a pitch deck and they just want to raise 250,000, but there's nothing in there that's explaining how that's going to, you know, at the end of the day, an investor wants to know how much do you want? When are we going to get it back? How much on top of how much we've invested are we going to get? And that's not necessarily that narrative's not always there. So very much looking at, at, at that angle. Um, and then just one other thing that I would love to, to get across to, to listeners is that we're here to collaborate. We want to cooperate and co-invest with, with you know, other uh, investors, angels, VC funds that are in this space. So um, the, the more that, that Veg Capital can communicate and, and work with others, and uh, the better it's going to be so that we can share the burden, we can share due diligence. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of that's already happening through Glasswall Syndicate and there's networks building in, in the UK and Europe as well. But uh, we want to hopefully be um, a, a big part of that going forward. I'll say shout out to Glasswell Syndicate. I just joined Glasswall this year as um, an investing member and it is so very exciting and they do a wonderful job. Lisa Feria, Macy Marriott, I just shout out to them. They are so brilliant and uh, it's a very exciting time. I, I do love working with them. I love to hear that you're open to working with other investors. Um, yeah, 100%. Yes. Uh, well, so let me ask you about that. When people are pitching to you, of course, this is not a grant. So it has to be paid back. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be paid back. And, and um, with profit, ideally, that's what people are looking at. But also you're saying, you know, what value do you add that is better than meat and dairy? That might be an, an easy value add. I worry that I don't want to see a vegan company go after another. So I speak of my own tiny little investing experience that I'm doing here. I don't want to see a vegan company that just goes after another vegan company. So yeah. my goal is to see, okay, what are you changing in the meat and dairy landscape that's going to disrupt meat and dairy? Um, don't go after the other vegan company, go after the meat and dairy company. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's, uh, that's really strong. That's one of the key things that we're looking for is who, who you're competing with. Mm -hmm. And if you're only com already competing and, and you're listing six existing vegan products, then what's the point in us investing? Our, our main focus as a fund is removing animals from the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. So, we're, we're, so, so that is at the core of it. And, um, you know, we need to make really good decisions because our shareholders are effectively the animals because we're donating everything to charity. And that makes it even more important because it's not just money that we're making for other people. We're trying to earn as much money as we can through sound business decisions so that we can recoup money and reinvest it for that virtuous circle. And can you share what the charities are? Well, it's going to be two to three years, I would say, before we start making any profits. So we've got a bit of time before that. But um, because we're a UK uh, fund um, and I understand from a tax perspective um, it's going to be a lot easier for us to donate tax efficiently with UK and European registered charities mm -hmm. uh, so you know that that might be uh, a vegan society veganuary um, mm, uh, pro veg mm -hmm. um, fever animal aid those type of uh, charities but uh, we've got we've got two or three years to figure that out. Godspeed. Oh, I just love the work <laughs> that you do. Okay, some uh, quick personal exit questions on the way out. You had said, okay. well, 10 years ago you went vegan, but I'm wondering if you can share with us the exact moment, if you remember, the exact moment you said, that's it, I'm never going back. Yeah, well, I, I'd been vegetarian for about 10 years, so I was sort of halfway there, I guess. Um, and uh, But I, I was on a blog. I was interested in peak oil. Have you heard that, about that? where the oil supply reaches half um, has been that's under underground has been used up and that is the peak it's like a bell curve mm. and it start once it starts coming down it gets a bit dicey uh, economically let's say but I was on this blog and there was a, an advert and it said the video of the meat and dairy industry doesn't want you to see and 
you know, I was just intrigued. I thought I'll click on that. I'm vegetarian anyway. There's not going to be anything that um, I didn't already know. And it was only a five minute video and uh, it showed scenes of cruelty in eggs and dairy that I hadn't even thought about. You know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't, as 39 years old, mm -hmm. I hadn't realized that, um, you know, male calves are taken away from the mothers and the, 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 the chicks are ground up and all that. And it was just, it was Alive. Right. Yeah. It's just, I, I couldn't, I just thought, can't, I, didn't, I don't think I even actually knew what a vegan was at that point in time, but I just knew that I couldn't support those industries anymore. So that, mm -hmm. that was the reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dairy industry is built on breaking the bond between mother and baby in the most cruelest way possible. Google it, folks. Google it. Okay. Uh, what do you wish you knew 10 years ago that you know now? And you can't say, oh, I wish I was vegan then. So I'm just more looking at a, like a life lesson. What do you wish you knew 10 years ago that you know now? This would be before you started Veganuary and all that you've learned from then on. Yeah. I wished I'd known there was a company called Beyond Meat coming and that I could invest <laughs> in the company. All, all I would have put everything in it. <laughs> 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 oh i love the yeah. candor okay yes i i wish i knew that too <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's so fun um if you ever have a day where you're not making gobs of money on owning your beyond meat stock by the way since then i've bought it and sold it and bought it and sold it and bought it and sold it. it's been very fun yeah. for me to just kind of play okay. that thing but um yeah. if there ever is a day that isn't going mm -hmm. your way do you have a phrase that you say to get yourself back in the groove? So there's uh, there's that phrase, uh, Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has something like that. Um, but, you know, we're, we're such a small bunch of people working on this cause, but I think that we're, the impact that we're all having as individuals has the potential to be huge. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, please go ahead. So that keeps me committed. Um, you know, as with everybody, you have days where you're frustrated and, and uh, there's days where I think, God, I wish I'd never watched that video. I was quite happy being who I was back then and without all of this. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, I've met some amazing people since going vegan. Um, and uh you know, my life is, has become so much more full and interesting since uh, I joined the movement. And uh, and I'm, it's now it's something that I literally work seven days, all hours, live, breathe, everything. Yeah. Yes, me too. Very much so. Uh, mm. I'll just riff on that and say that uh, change never comes from the top. It always comes from the bottom. It comes yeah. from people aligning their purchasing power and their voices with their values. And you're seeing that take place right now in society. So it, it's a very exciting time to live for sure. Um, uh, what would you like to be known for? You're obviously so purpose driven and maybe it's one and the same. Maybe you simply want to be known for the guy who started Veganuary, who knows, but I'm wondering if you can share with us, you know, if people are talking about you 50 years from now, what would you like to be known for? Yeah, I think, I think Veganuary, obviously, and I'd love to see it continue to grow and, and to be the guy that had that, um, that, that idea originally and stimulated and seeded it to 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 to, to become a thing, um, but more generally, just somebody that that tried the best mm -hmm. and, uh, and and you know tried to to make the world a better place. Um, you know, I, I think about the, the the cause all the time, as we all do. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to trying to basically save as many animals as possible. So. Um, we great uh, but i don't this again it's not something i th really think about but um it, that's 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 my that's what i try to achieve in life and you're making you're moving the needle i do have to say and for that i really have to say i'm so grateful like so many of the people who've joined the feed today tom and sal michelle alfano janelle is so great susan hargraves tina walker so many people i'm not even listing them all mags hope caesar taurus uh so many people are joining today because you, Matthew, you one person alone has so significantly moved the needle 
for people, the planet, and animals. I am so wow. deeply grateful. I really oh, am so wow. deeply grateful. Thank you. Wow, thank you. I, 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 I'm always a bit sort of uh, reluctant to, to take praise. And I'm also, you know, I don't see myself as being the smartest individual. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. there's some great people that you've had on, on this podcast, uh, this, this um, show before me. Um, but, you know, I, I just try my best. I work as hard as I can. Um, I try and learn use what I learned in the window and door industry and all my business career before that and just keep learning and trying to re-implement what you've learned in the past to make yourself more effective in the future. Well, well done you. We can all take lessons from Matthew, that's for sure. Okay, my last two quickie questions, they're almost one word answers. I'll start with uh, cooking. We don't even know if you do cook, but let's say it's been a very busy day, you walk through the door, what's the one meal you can always make super fast, it's always good? I had it tonight for heaters. So ah. just it's a great way to just get some veggies down me. Um, and uh, you, know, you don't need to be a skilled chef neither to do it. So um, that, that, that's my go to quick meal. And if you're on the run, and you've got a busy day, you don't have time for lunch, what is your go to snack? Oh, God. Oh, um, I'm not really a snacking person. Um, I mean, my favorite meal is, is vegan fried chicken. Ah. Yeah. So, um, and uh, yeah, I might be investing in a vegan fried chicken company, uh, actually, because uh, I, I just think it's an amazing product, Satan. Um, so it would be that. Snacking? I don't know. Bars of chocolate? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, clearly you're not a snacker. Wow, good for no, you. No. Oh my gosh, good for you. I'm, but you really had me at vegan chicken, fried vegan chicken. Are you talking about the Beyond Meat that had its? Wasn't Beyond Meat trying something in the UK? Beyond Meat, for example, I just got a, a an email from them today. They are launching uh, something on Monday with Kentucky Fried Chicken. Are you talking about the Beyond Meat fried chicken? That's that. No, I've not tried that. No. Okay. no, no. So, so the, there is um, a restaurant that me and Jane always visited in York, and um, the, the guy there had started to do a few uh, vegan options, and um, one of them was was vegan fried chicken. And because we're the founders of Veganuary, he always came over and chatted with us, and I always promoted, you know, you need to get the Beyond Burger in here, Adam. You know, you need to start doing tofu fish and chips. So he started building his range. And do you remember how you were talking about? 11% of vegan options on menus. He's more like 50 or 60% now. Awesome. Extremely well, but his vegan fried chicken is amazing. So I've been saying to him, look, you need to work out how to get that product um, into retailers. It's probably as a frozen product. Um, so anyway, I'm telling you more than I should do, but we're in conversations right now because I just really believe in that product. It's so exciting when you try a product like that, that you so believe in. I have one like that of braised beef out of Australia that I so believe in. It's just yeah. such an exciting time. And we don't have time to go into it today, but that's another prediction I'll make about plant-based foods. I think you're going to see the vegan, the frozen section really yeah. spike. So, you know, yeah. we started talking about the study that came out where <clears throat> grocery stores are making more money if they put plant-based meats in the meat aisle. So you're probably going to see more of that. I think parallel to that, you're going to see vegan foods in the frozen food section. I also make the, yeah, you do your frozen food. Oh, it's very yeah. exciting to see. Uh, and then I keep saying, there's just so much to talk about. I swear this is my last question. How do you feel mm -hmm. about blended products? Uh, I wouldn't eat them myself, but, um, you know, I think if, uh, do, do you mean where it's like half meat and, and, uh, yeah. Uh, it'd be a difficult. I'd, I'd, uh, we haven't had the, that dilemma of investing in a company that does blended meat yet. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think anything that's uh, saving as many animals as possible, I'm going to support it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just for those of you guys who don't know, if you have a blended product, it's, um, you know, if you used to have a product that was, let's say a chicken nugget and it was 80% chicken and 20% filler. Now they're going to be sort of 80% or 50% veggie filler and 50% chicken. Then they get to use the advertising campaign of, Hey mom, get your kids to eat their veggies. And yeah, so yeah. they, you know, there's that sort of logic behind it. I'm not a fan. I think it's going to be short lived. I see. I like it for some reasons. I like it because meat and dairy run on very small margins. So if you uh -huh. take that meat consumption and you cut it in half, they are not surviving. They're already not surviving. They need subsidies. You start cutting things in half, 
the business equation is going to shift that much faster. So I like it for that. But I think ultimately I do care about the consumer. It's not a healthy product. It's not even a really <laughs> honest product. I just don't think it's going to, I think it's going to be short lived. I think it's their way. I think it's Purdue and Tyson both have these blended products. They're kind of dipping in a toe to like not lose their meat ground, but it's just not going to last. That's my prediction. Who knows? You can prove me wrong, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Matthew, I just want to thank you for everything you do for your time today, of course, for your continual willingness to reinvent yourself from door and window guy to veganuary guy to million dollar vegan guy to veg capital guy uh all with the one goal in mind of getting animals out of the food supply chain i am forever indebted to you thank you for all you do oh well it's uh, it's a pleasure and thank you for having me on the show and uh, i love your hair by the way Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It took me a we while to get yeah, we, we got that going on. Well, you probably <laughs> didn't get much pressure when you went silver, but I got a lot of pressure not to do it. And oh, I am done with hair dye. It's just a diff different show, but okay. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I went I went grey when I got married first time round. Within a few months, uh, just went like this. <laughs> the first marriage did it to you? Yeah. 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 Well, okay, that all is also <laughs> another show. Okay, uh, for all you budding entrepreneurs out there who happen to be in Europe, uh, go to you can see it on the screen here, vegcapital.co.uk. Matthew Glover's your guy. You'll be back. We'll have more to talk about with you maybe six <laughs> months. See how you guys are doing. Um, until then, thank you for all you do, Matthew. Don't go away. But everybody else, it's almost the weekend. Have a great weekend. I will see you next Tuesday for the Plant Based Business Hour at one o'clock Pacific Time, right here. Thanks for joining everybody. Matthew, stay put.